Hi. Now, in this tutorial, what I want to show you is that if we have two complex numbers, Z1, Z2, expressed in modulus argument form, then if we divide our two complex numbers, then the modulus of Z1 divided by Z2 is equal to the modulus of Z1 divided by the modulus of Z2, or in other words, R1 over R2. And when it comes to the argument, or arg for short, of Z1 divided by Z2, it's equal to arg of Z1 minus arg of Z2, or in other words, theta1 minus theta2. Now this is a result that you should be familiar with, but if you're called upon to prove it, then I've got the proof here for you. Now suppose we have our two complex numbers, Z1, Z2, expressed in modulus argument form, and we do Z1 divided by Z2. Then we're going to have R1 cos theta1 plus I sine theta1 all over R2 cos theta2 plus I sine theta2. And what we would need to do now to clean this up is to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the complex number Z2. So in other words, we need to multiply top and bottom here by R2, we'll do it on the bottom first, R2 cos theta2 minus I sine theta2. Okay, we'll put that on the top here so that we're creating effectively one here, so it's not going to alter the value of our fraction here, just the appearance of it. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll just expand this out, okay? We'll just come down about here, say. And what have we got? Well, we've got R1 times R2. Let's just put that at the front here, R1, R2. And then we'll have a square bracket. And if we multiply out cos theta 1 now with cos theta 2, that's going to give us a real part, cos theta 1, cos theta 2. We'll also have another real part when we multiply i sine theta 1 with minus i sine theta 2. That's going to be minus i squared times sine theta 1 sine theta 2. Well, minus i squared is going to be plus 1. So we're just going to have plus sine of theta 1 sine theta 2. Okay, so that's the real part. And then we get two terms which are imaginary. So we'll just put i there and we'll put the two terms that are imaginary. The first imaginary term we'll say, take as the one we get when we do i sine theta 1 multiplied by cos theta 2. So that would be sine theta 1 multiplied by cos theta 2. And the other one we'll get will be when we do cos theta 1 multiplied by minus i sine theta 2. That will give us a minus, and then we'll have cos theta 1 sine theta 2. Okay? Now this is all going to be divided then by the product of these two values. So we've got R2 times R2, R2 times R2. I could write R2 squared, I know, but I'll just leave it like that. And then if we expand these two brackets, we're going to have cos theta 2 multiplied by another cos theta 2. In other words, cos squared of theta 2. Then we're going to have cos theta 2 times minus i sine theta 2. So we'll have minus i sine theta 2 cos theta 2. Then we do i sine theta 2 times cos theta 2. So it's going to be plus i sine theta 2 cos theta 2. And then finally, we've got plus i sine theta 2 times minus i sine theta 2. So it's going to be minus i squared. Minus i squared is going to give us plus 1. So we're just going to have plus sine theta 2 times the sine theta 2 there, plus sine squared theta 2 then. 
Okay. Now, do you recognize any patterns here? Well, if we look at these two terms here, you should recognize that this is the pattern for the identity, the cosine of a minus b. Because the cosine of a minus b, cos of a minus b, expands to cos of a cos b plus sine a sine b. Okay, so this seems to match up quite nicely where a is theta 1 and b is theta 2. And if we look at this pair here, this 2 should be a familiar identity. This is the identity for the sine of a minus b. The sine of a minus b is identical to the sine of a cos of b minus the cosine of a times the sine of b. And again, you can see that a matches up with theta 1 and b matches up with theta 2. All right? So what we can say then is that all of this is equal to, well, we certainly can clean this pair up here, okay? We can see that R2s cancel out with one another here, leaving us with R1 over R2. R1 over R2. And for this section here, this is the same as the cosine of theta1 minus theta2. So you could write that then as the cosine of theta1 1 minus theta 2. Better put that in brackets. And for this term here, it's going to be plus i sine of theta 1 minus theta 2. Okay? And underneath here, can you see that this term here cancels out with this term here? Just leaving us with cos squared theta 2 plus sine squared theta 2. And we should be familiar with this, the cosine squared of an angle plus the sine squared of an angle, the same angle, is identical to 1, a basic identity. So this is all divided by 1. And then this gives us a complex number in the form which is identical to r cos of theta plus i sine of theta. Theta being theta 1 minus theta 2. R being r1 divided by r2. So this gives us the result that we wanted to prove. This tells us then that therefore we've got the mod of z1 divided by z2 is equal to, well we can see it's r1 divided by r2. R1 is the modulus of Z1 and R2 is the modulus of Z2. So this is exactly the same as the mod of Z1 divided by the mod of Z2. Or we can think of it as simply R1 over R2. And also when it comes to looking at the arguments, the arg for short of Z1 divided by Z2 turns out to be equal to this angle here, theta, which corresponds to theta 1 minus theta 2. Theta 1 is the arg of Z1, theta 2 is the arg of Z2. So this must be equal to the arg of Z1 minus the arg of Z2. Or theta 1 minus theta 2. And there's your result. Okay? So I hope you've been able to follow my reasoning through there. And that brings us to the end of this particular proof.